Okay, this Hangout on Air is now live. Welcome. Uh, I'm Mitch Resnick, a professor here at the MIT Media Lab, and I'd like to welcome all of you to this special online pre-conference workshop for IDC participants. I'm really looking forward to seeing many of you in Denmark next week for the Interaction Design and Children Conference. And it's great that this year, as a special experiment, we've been collaborating with the LEGO Foundation to put together this uh, pre-conference online session where we can start the conversation going about some of the key issues that we hope to be addressing next week at the conference, focusing especially on the topic of creative learning. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so we're already dealing, as I said, this is an experiment. We're already dealing a little bit with some technical difficulties, making sure that we don't get the feedback on here. Uh, actually, this is an experiment that we've been ex doing a lot with online uh, courses and online learning over the past year uh, in collaboration with my colleagues here, Natalie Rusk and Philip Schmidt in the Lifelong Kindergarten Group at the MIT Media Lab. Uh, Philip joined us a couple of years ago from P2PU, Peer to Peer University, where he had been doing a lot of work in uh, online courses and online learning. And we've been doing experimentation. We did a course together called Learning Creative Learning, where we've been trying different approaches for bringing people together for active collaborative learning online. And this is part of continuing that experiment. It's great to work together with the LEGO Foundation on this. So over the next hour, we'll be spending some time Give you a little background. First, we'll be hearing from the LEGO Foundation from some of the things that they've been doing in the you know, area of supporting creative uh, new learning experiences. Uh, then we'll be showing you some background about some of the ways that we've been collaborating with the LEGO company over the years on technologies for creative learning. We'll give you some pointers to some other pre-conference activities around creative learning in advance of the IDC conference. And they'll be having breakout sessions where you'll get to have conversations with one another on topics about digital technologies and creative learning. Uh, so we hope they'll you know, stay with us through the hour. There'll be opportunities to hear a little bit from us and to share with one another. And hopefully this will be the good beginnings of discussions for next week's conference. Uh, for, to get started, why don't I hand it off to over at LEGO headquarters in Denmark, we have Tina Holm, who will you know, welcome you from the LEGO company and from the LEGO Foundation. Thank you, Mitch. We want to uh, say hello here from Denmark. I have my colleagues here in the room as well. Uh, and we are so excited about this because we have been planning uh, for the IDC conference for the last year. Uh, and this is the very beginning of it. And uh, we really look forward to see you next week in Denmark and uh, discuss with you. Um, yeah. That's, uh, that was just a short uh, hello from me. I want to pass it on to Andrew, uh, also from the LEGO Foundation. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm actually sitting in Switzerland. The, uh, the LEGO Foundation is based across two offices, and it's, it's a real pleasure to uh, welcome everyone to this Hangout and to do some of the setup and preparation for um, IDC next week. I think we're, we're delighted to be um, co-hosting that event, to be working with Aarhus University in particular, which is a, an organization we hugely respect. Um, I, I just wanted to take a couple of moments by way of introduction just to say a bit about the LEGO Foundation and, and what we do and why we exist. Um, we are a foundation, we're a charitable organization. We were set up by the family that owns the LEGO Group. And we were set up because I think over 80 years, um, the, Le the LEGO Group has really discovered some of the wonderful things about play and the way in which children play. And in particular, the huge value and benefits that children gain from play. Um, it, it, there's too many people in the world who perhaps see play as a childish or a distractive activity, whereas I think actually what we've discovered, of course, is that play is one of the critical ways in which children learn. And so our future is, uh, sorry, our, our, our vision as an organization is to build a future where learning through play empowers children to become creative, engaged, lifelong learners. We really do believe that play is one of the critical ways um, in which children and, of course, adults can develop so many of the skills that they need in their life. And that's also why when we're trying to describe what we do, we talk about redefining play and reimagining learning. Um, not because, of course, children are playing in some wrong way, 
uh, we're, we're, we want to redefine play because, frankly, too many adults define play as something that's trivial, uh, that's something that, does, uh, that doesn't matter, whereas I think the research and the evidence points to play being hugely important. That's what our mission is about, and actually that also points to why we see uh, the debate and the discussion at IDC 14 uh, being so important, and of course particularly how play itself is evolving, uh, how the digital uh, aspects of play are becoming more important. And so uh, exploring that uh, at IDC, looking at how the lives of children are affected by that, um, is, is a key part. And of course one of the things that uh, we're, we're doing at uh, the event next week is a bit of a call to action. Um, you won't be able to see this, but hopefully uh, it's uh, uh, a suggestion to you that you might like to get your hands on the PDF of this if you haven't. It's a call to action because um, we really would like to encourage you to share some of your ideas, uh, give, give, share some of those ideas with the IDC community and perhaps actually make a video as we're suggesting there about that. So that's, uh, that's our thoughts. We're really looking to welcoming uh, as many people next week and starting that discussion and engaging it in ourselves. Um, and with that, I'll hand back to you in Boston, Mitch. Great, thanks, Andrew. Uh, let's, let's turn this off. Uh, so one thing I just wanted to make sure I didn't mention in the beginning is that there is the chat facility here. So we'd encourage people that as you know we're having discussions that you can continue to have discussions as well. But I think one thing we found when we were doing these online sessions is a lot of times we appreciate it when people said actually they enjoyed the chat more than listening to us. And I do think that you know this is an opportunity for you to get together and to share some of your ideas about creative learning. Uh, we'll try to plant some seeds to help you know, support some of that discussion. Uh, it's been great you know, hearing about some of the activities from the LEGO Foundation. I think a lot of the goals and the visions of the LEGO Foundation really resonate with the work that we've been doing here at the Media Lab, which is one reason that our collaboration has gone so well over the years. As we've thought about our work here at the Media Lab, we've often framed it in terms of the idea of creative learning and how can we support creative learning. We think a lot about how we can support creative learning here at the Media Lab itself to you know, support the you know, creativity and innovation and the work that the students and researchers here are doing. Then in our group, we really focus on how can we empower children around the world to become creative learners, because we see that as more important than anything else in today's society. As things are changing so rapidly, the ability to think and act creatively is more important than ever before. As we've thought about how can we support creative learning experiences, we've sometimes thought about it in terms of four guiding principles that each start with the letter P. So we're going to talk a little bit about the four P's of creative learning. And it starts out with the first P of projects. We really are focused on a project-based approach to learning in that we see a lot of the best learning happens when someone starts with an idea and carries it through to a finished project that they can share with others. Uh, this again, I think, fits well with work with Lego. When kids build with Lego bricks, they're sort of making a project. They're not just solving some question that was given to them. They aren't just, you know, you know, working on a puzzle. They're creating a project that sort of takes their imagination and they design things that they can share with the world. So we start with the first B of projects, and then it moves on to peers. Um, the second P. And peers, uh, the kind of obvious uh, aspect of peer-to-peer -peer learning is that if you're learning something and you get stuck, it would be good to have someone close by that you can ask a question and maybe they can help you. And um, peers often are better able to help you than uh, experts because they've just learned the same things that you're learning and they've struggled often with the same problems you've struggled with. And so when they explain something to you, um, they might be in a language that is more accessible to you than someone who has learned this many, many years ago and has you know, full understanding of the whole field. Um, the, the magical thing about peer learning, though, is that when we learn with other people, it turns out we're learning a lot of things that are not related to the content. We learn to empathize. We learn to communicate. We learn to collaborate with others. And when we explain something to someone else, we often learn that thing even more or even better than we thought we'd learned it before. Um, I think we've all had this experience when you explain something to someone else, you realize, oh, actually your own understanding isn't quite as deep as you thought it was, or there's a new angle to it that, that you explore. So that's, that's the, the P for peers. And the third P is the P for passion. Yeah, so 
passion. We're really interested in, and we do a lot of work here based on interests. What do you really care about? And learning based on that. And I think there's both a motivational part where if something you really care about, you're more likely to, when you have obstacle, to want to keep persisting and keep going with it because you care about what you're working on. But there's also, I think, the more cognitive part of something building on prior knowledge, so something that you've already been learning about, you can then, if you can connect what, the new learning to something you've already learned about, we know that um, from research that that really helps and from our own experiences that that really helps if it's something that you know you're like, oh, okay, this reminds me of something else I did and then I'm building on that with the new knowledge to connect it with something. So when we say passion, it can often be the kind of, it doesn't have to be like this individual passion. It could be someone, like something that you're working on with other people, again, with your peers, something that you all care about. It could be an idea. It could be a cause that you're working on, and it could have a, a real purpose. Sometimes we think, is it passion or is it purpose? And I think we think of those together. So we have projects, peers, passion, and then the fourth P is play. Uh, I sometimes think of this as the most misunderstood P, uh, <laughs> because sometimes people hear play and they sort of trivialize it and say, oh, yeah, it's good to have fun. And of course, you know, it's you know, nice to have a fun learning experience, and we do want you know, it to be fun. On the other hand, when we think of play, our conception of play is play is sort of a, is, it's sort of a stance towards the world. It's a way that you engage with things by constantly experimenting, trying new things, testing the boundaries. That's the special aspect of play that we think really contributes to the creative learning experience. Because uh, in the true playful attitudes towards engaging with the world, you're constantly taking risks, you know, seeing if something new, you know, trying out something new to see if it works, trying again if it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the way in which play makes a really important contribution. So it's not just that play is motivating because it's fun, but it's an approach to learning that that really you know, helps you go deeper because you're constantly trying new things, adjusting based on your experiences mm -hmm. through play. Uh, so I think within those four Ps of projects, peers, passion, and play, we really try to take it to heart in our own work here to support our own creative activities. Uh, and we really want to try to help other people engage in the four Ps. Uh, as we sometimes say, we want to give peace a chance uh, to sort of try to help everybody you know, to engage with the four Ps. Uh, I think this will be a theme, this idea about how we can support creative learning will be a theme in next week's conference. And it was a theme of the challenge that Andrew mentioned before, uh, you know, we did with the call to participation uh, from the Lego Foundation, where the videos they were asking for was to see how can we design new digital technologies that empower children to become creative, lifelong learners. So it's really looking at that co connection between digital technologies and supporting these type of creative learning experiences. So from here, we're going to go into two videos. We'll show one of the video submissions that's already come in in this call for participation. So if you go to the IDC website, on the left column, you can see there's a call for participation. On the chat window, we'll also give you the link to the page where you can see the videos already submitted. We encourage others to submit videos as well. We'll show you one of the short videos that's already been submitted. Then after that, we'll show a longer conversation between Eric Hansen of the Lego Company and myself, where we talk about the history of our collaboration between the Lego Company and MIT Media Lab on new technologies to support creative learning. And then after those two videos, we'll come back and introduce the breakout session where you'll get a chance to share your ideas about technologies and creative learning. <laughs>